At 7.42, for years we've been told that high cholesterol means an increased risk of health problems, but now a new report is saying we might have got it wrong. High cholesterol is blamed for raising the risk of heart problems like heart attacks, strokes and coronary heart disease. Drugs called statins are prescribed to lower cholesterol levels. They are the most widely prescribed drug in the UK, costing the NHS £500 million a year. Heart problems are often caused by cardiovascular disease, which kills around 180,000 people in the UK every year and is also suspected to be caused by high cholesterol. But new research, which has been published in the British Medical Journal, now claims that it is not to blame, suggesting instead that high levels of cholesterol could be good for your health. So how do we know what to believe? Joined on the sofa by one of the authors of the report, Dr. Malcolm Hendrick, and from London by Professor Jeremy Pearson, Associate Medical Director of the British Heart Foundation. Very good morning to both of you. Good morning. Uh, uh, in a way, I suppose we better, the audience better be braced for a little confusing data coming up yeah. right now. Would you, uh, Malcolm Hendrick, would you want to Can start I, us off? It's Kendrick. I'm sorry. That's all right. My mistake. Right, no, got the mistakes out of the way early. <laughs> uh, we've got that done. Tell us, tell us why you are confounding what everyone thought to be accepted fact. Well, I, I'd like to say I'm not confounding it. We just looked at the, the data that, that there is. Um, we decided to look at patients, um, or patients, these weren't patients, these were just people over the age of 60, uh, because this is when most people die of heart disease. And interesting, no, no one had ever looked at this cholesterol split, and you may have heard of good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Bad cholesterol is LDL cholesterol, which is what we looked at specifically. No one had done this analysis before, so we looked at thousands of studies, which narrowed down to very few, because in the end, you, you find that most of the studies are not appropriate. And over about 68,000 patients, over many years of study, what we found was that if your bad cholesterol was higher, you lived longer, and you were no more likely to die of heart disease or strokes. Basically, that's it. Uh, so just to be clear, you haven't done your own independent study. You've no, no, looked no. at a series of different studies. This is a review of the literature, essentially looking at all the studies and bringing them together. And um, this is something that's, that's commonly done, if you like. When you have a question about an area, you say, well, what is all the data telling us? So we tried to look at all the data and bring that together. So this is something that a lot of people do nowadays. So let's talk to Professor Pearson from the British Heart Foundation. If I'm boiling this argument down to its most basic level, and it's dangerous with science, we're saying now that bad cholesterol, uh, but that cholesterol is not damaging to your health. High cholesterol is not damaging to your health. Uh, that's the conclusion that Dr. Kendrick and his colleagues have drawn from their review of published data. As he said, this is not new data, and in fact, uh, the results are not controversial and have been known before. Uh, it's not very surprising that in elderly people, the level of cholesterol isn't a very good predictor of death, or even death from heart disease, because many other things become just as important, if not more important. However, there is, in my view, incontrovertible evidence from very large clinical trials, and indeed from patients with genetic mutations, that if you lower LDL cholesterol, you actually increase lifespan and reduce death from cardiovascular disease and that studies on over a million patients and genetic studies on hundreds. Okay, let's put that to, to Malcolm then. What, what's your view? So he says it com he, does, he d has conflicting evidence, doesn't believe, doesn't think that what you're saying rings true. Yeah, well of course this is the mainstream view. I have been looking at this area for but over he, 20 know, years. Many, many thousands of patients. Many, many thousands mentioned. of patients that have been studied in clinical trials basically funded by the pharmaceutical industry, yes, um, which I think it's interesting since 2004 there hasn't been a single positive statin study done, and that's when they changed the rules on reporting of studies. The other interesting thing is, as I asked him earlier, as you may remember, there's a drug called um, Levacetribab, Levacetribab, which, um, uh, well, Levacetribab, which lowered cholesterol by, bad cholesterol by 37% increased good cholesterol by 130 percent and had no impact on heart disease whatsoever. Now earlier somebody said that that's very far too complicated to explain. It's not complicated for me to explain. Cholesterol is not bad for you, bad cholesterol is not bad for you, so lowering it would make no difference. That's what this study found. It doesn't matter how many positive studies found a thing. Statins do lower cholesterol levels and they do reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, I... but they don't do it by lowering LDL Before cholesterol. Before we go back to Professor Pearson, can I just check with you, that he seemed to raise the issue of age in relation to the studies yes. you've looked at. So, if you're taking someone watching this who's yeah. 30 years old, who's 35 years old, yeah. who's 20 years old, do the same rules yeah. apply? Are you saying today 
go ahead and eat those high fat products that yes. we've all been warned well, of. Yeah. Are you saying, and it, with impunity, from, at whatever age? Well, as you may know, the, the recent research has been very uh, saying that basically fat isn't bad for you to eat. Um, but essentially, I mean, this idea that when you get older, it's not a risk. It's a bit like saying, when you start smoking, it's bad for you till you reach the age of 60. But after the age of 60, you can smoke as much as you like and it'll make okay. no difference. That's a ridiculous argument. Okay, Professor Pearson, I can see you shaking your head. Um, so what would you say to these arguments? Well, the smoking argument I wouldn't agree with. You should give up smoking at whatever age. Uh, but if you look at the effects of smoking on health in elderly patients, uh, then it may not show up as a risk factor because lots of other things do. Uh, what, about, get back, yeah, sorry, well, what about, what about we, fat as well and cholesterol? Okay, again, I would have to disagree with Dr. Kendrick. He would agree with me that he and a handful of other people are sceptical about diet and about cholesterol and heart disease, uh, but he's in the minority. There are tens of thousands of doctors around the world that wouldn't agree with him, and they base their views on what they believe is solid scientific evidence of the type that I've told you about. Okay, thank you both. I see we cannot agree on this. Thank you very much indeed for trying to at least help us through it. Thank you. Uh, let's you. see, the time is 7.49. We're going to take a moment now.